How are you, brother? I'm doing really good, thanks, mate. 10,000 subscribers. Yes, well, 12,000 now. And uh, thank you. Thank you to all these um, subscribers or friends, as I prefer to yeah. you. I hate, I hate that commodity thing. You look like you're in the library, mate. What's going on there? Well, last time you joined me, I was in the um, wardrobe. And tonight, it's much later in the evening in Los Angeles. And um, I thought I'd go and get in a comfortable chair. Because last time I spoke to you, the chair wasn't that comfortable. And I thought, if we're going to have a heart-to-heart -heart and a tate-a-tate, then I need to be in, in Daddy's chair. And I'm in Daddy's chair right now. So <laughs> that's where I am. Have you got a big house over there, mate? How does, that, how does it work? Yeah, it works like this. So you go on tour, you make some money, you um, think about where you're going to put that money, and then you get scared of losing that money. So you think, what's the best thing to do with it? And then you think, well, I'll put it into bricks and mortar, because if everything crashes and everything goes away, at least you'll be left with bricks and mortar and a viable actual thing. You know? So I put my money into a house, then what happens is you put your money into a house and then the house itself needs paying for because, you know, it's, it's a big size. And what you don't know, you know, being a lad from Stoke and um, coming from centuries of navvies, you, you, you haven't got a clue what and how to do stuff with your finances. And then you realize this is, the, then this is the, the loophole that you get in. You're constantly chasing your tail. It's like now that you've got that, you have to pay for that every year and the upkeep of that. It's not a complaint. It's just an observation. You know, it's, a, it's, an, it's, an, it's, an, it's an observation. So, yeah, I have this really great big house. And then I worry about my finances and having to pay for it every year. So... I think that um, what people do in my situation, I've noticed, they sort of have that big splurge of fame where um, the financial tap gets turned on and then the, the flow of that sort of decreases. And um, I think people go on to simplify their lives and get rid of things. And that's what I'm in the process of doing right now is going, okay, well, I've experienced this. This has been a lot of fun, but um, for my age, where I am, and what I've been through, and what's happened to me, you know, having financial insecurity perhaps shouldn't exist. Mm. Can we just, let's just jump in there, Rob, and say, it seems to be this period where someone's, they've had the massive fame, They've had the girls, the cars, the, you, 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 and, and let's remember that a lot of us, myself included, when I came into writing, which was, which was my art, right? I had one goal and it was, I want, I wanted my five minutes of fame, <laughs> right? You know, I'd always, you know, I had a dysfunctional childhood as, as we've already discussed. And I felt, I felt kind of like overlooked, you know, and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to start writing this book, Eating Smoke. So I started writing that off my fucking head, right? And I thought, I'm going to write a best-selling book. People are going to, you know, enjoy it. That will be my thing, right? But... He, he, here's the thing. Overwhelmingly, it seems that celebrities have this desperate yearning. Uh, maybe desperate's the wrong word, but a yearning to to be acknowledged and recognised. And when they have this initial success, and it's everything's gravy, and then it goes away, then it seems that that these satanists if we want to call them that 
and and, and my jury's out rob always right I, I i can't i can't go on hearsay i can only go on what what i see but it seems that they come in there they get the they offer the celebrity the deal you know you're going to be rich again you're going to be famous again here's the million dollar contract but it it comes with clauses they call it a faustian pact and i won't even pretend i know who faust was i don't know if he was the writer or the character i think it was the character in a play i like knowing that it's called a faustian pact because as somebody pointed out it adds to the pseudo intellectualism that we have but it's i think that's where the intellectualism stops it's like we know it's called something we just don't know why it's called that <laughs> I don't ever want to pretend I'm anything I'm not, Rob. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a. No, I don't. I don't want to de derail your train of thought. So go on. So yeah, and let. I don't know if I should name names because I I don't believe in bringing shit down on someone else's life if 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 it's just like hearsay. But. <sighs> But this is our children's future we're talking about, and we've got to start having some dialogue, right? So let me just give an example. Liam Gallagher, what the fuck is going on there? Start, well, in what way? Well, in as far as his brother got massively successful in, in on the America on the Atlantic side, right? Which is kind of from what I understand is every British pop star's dream is to make it in America, right? And I know that's been a, 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 a part of your career or an element of your career. So his brother's over there smashing it. He's got all owls popping up in his videos. This side of the Atlantic, you got Liam there going, oh, my band's called BDI. Right, you mm -hmm. know, it's no coincidence his band is called BD Frickin' I. Then he's in an interview and they're talking about a song, something Magnolia. I think it was something that um, uh, Paul Weller wrote. Okay, <clears throat> and there's some kind of underlying. Um, sentiment in this song, can we say, and, it, and, and it's a bit like satanic. So you got Liam in this interview, and he's talking about this song, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, it's proper Lucifer, man. That's what we're." He turns to his music buddy and goes, "Yeah, that's what we're into, right?" And okay, that BDI, let, let's just say, it failed or it petered into insignificance I, I i don't know the statistics but next thing you know or liam is like back again as one of the biggest celebrities <laughs> in the world and don't get me wrong i've always really liked i like you rob i liked him i like that fuck it kind of attitude you, you know i i like that i like the fact that liam just tells people to fuck off because that's kind of part of us isn't it you know we've got that you know up against the british establishment fuck you you, you you've had it too good too long we're gonna swear we're gonna drink we're gonna fucking snort coke fuck it it's 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 helped us find who we are kind of thing but the fact of the matter is, is Liam, and if you're watching, mate, I mean, there's no disrespect and come, come and talk to me, but like suddenly back up there again, international stardom, having just been talking about all this shit and you're thinking, what is going on? Okay. Can I uh, jump in? Okay. So first of all, Oasis had a decent career in America, not a massive career. Noel's not, he was, who was he supporting? He was supporting 
He was supporting. So oh no, he was doing a double thing with Snow Patrol in America, playing reasonable sized venues. Nothing gigantic, nothing to be ashamed about either. But, you know, not on a level that makes any impact other than, you know, some 40 somethings very happy, which his music does. So, on account of him being massive in America, it's not true. You know, we, he's done well. Um, over to Liam. Liam um, did BDI. And I'll be honest with you, the songs weren't very good. It's as simple as that. The idea and the concept of that whole thing wasn't very good. And, uh, you know, they had... Uh, and I know that we have beef and all that business, but impartially, you know, because I, I'm going to big them up in a minute. Um, you know, then Liam did a solo, his solo career. People, I think people wanted him to have that solo career. The record was better. He went and worked with proper songwriters, you know, that do songwriting for a living, that craft verses, chorists, middle eights, really, really well. Um, he writes a great lyric. He does great melodies. And he is the voice of a generation. Thing is about Liam is whatever he did, if he got every aspect of it right, people want more of him. And that's the truth, mm. you know, because he's an incredible personality. He's got loads of charisma. He behaves in a way that you would like to behave, given the chance of being a rock star. He is fulfilling your dream, and he's doing it excellently and always has. Mm. So if all elements of the project come together incredibly well, which they did, you know, he's, got, he's, got a, he's now got handfuls of great songs, in his solo career, you know, for what it's worth um, is a song that he wrote off the last album. I think it's the best song of that year. If you ever listen to it, it's just authentic, incredible, hits you in all the right places, you know. So here's, and I, I will now leap into something else, you know, is sort of, you know, where it's, the accusations become abusive and um, beyond belief to the infinite degree that, um, and I think it's part of people's makeup. When people get incredible success, it reflects on them in a way where they represent abundance. And if they're looking at somebody and they see abundance, magnified in their hearts it makes them feel small so they want to have you be secretly gay secretly smackhead secretly a satanist now that's the new creative version of belittling somebody's talent and hard work you know and sacrifices uh not literal sacrifices i just mean, i mean you know in life so um you know the thing is about Oasis is they had those two hugely charged, of the moment, incredible albums that spoke to the world mm. on a level that 0.0.0% of musicians and singer-songwriters get to experience. That was the class of those songs. Now, with those songs, literally their career can live forever, to quote one of their songs. With Noel, um, he isn't big in America, you know, and Liam isn't one of the biggest stars worldwide. Uh, this is what we have with, um, with the UK, which we, we accuse Americans of being. We see our UK prism with our celebrities as, well, this must be happening worldwide because it's happening here. You know, it's... It's not happening outside the UK. You know, it's not. If, if, he, <laughs> if there is a secret meeting where you go and shake hands and you do a Faustian pact, I'd want more than burnage. 
So let's just jump. Let's just step back a bit, Rob, because first of all, even like they're talking about this shit, what the fuck is that? I don't go about my day and go, do you know what? I'm thinking about Satanism today or, well, actually, maybe I do because it is a factor in, it seems to be a factor in life, right? Maybe it, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be careful of not, not getting lost down an alleyway, but Stephen King, you know, worked his ass off to become an author, wrote a book called Carrie, you know, worked his ass off and struggled. He was writing in his washing room, had three kids to support or whatever. He was a teacher, da 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 da, da. Wrote a book called Carrie, clearly a satanic text or about someone who's possessed. Bang, gets $300,000 advance, right? JK Rowling, and again, I'm not casting aspersions here. I'm asking questions because, like, I'm a father and I, I, I've, I've got to set an example for my son, you know? So J.K. Rowling wrote, writes a book which is, okay, it's, it's a children's book. We get that. But essentially, it's about the occult. And bang, she's just the, the, literally the biggest writer in the world you got liam there in his interviews doing this right that's just fucking weird why would you even say that in an interview if that was even your your thing okay we could maybe argue sometimes we haven't always been the smartest cookie in 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 the book then you got um noel there with the owls so that's Moloch in satanic terms in his, in his videos. Um, and Mate, I'd love them to be all part of the agenda. <laughs> that would suit my narrative perfectly. You know, I, I don't, you know, where, where they are concerned, um, I think people become poster boys for a certain group of people that have shaped your life. And whereas Liam in particular is concerned, anybody that's ever bullied me at all, all the way through my life, a multitude of them, I forget about them and put it onto one person and that's him. And that's why I want to fight him. That's why I want to fight him in the ring. You know, he's your archetypal schoolboy bully that tries to intimidate because of some um, perpetual lack of um self-worth basically and um look he may have changed now i don't know who he is now but um i still want to fight the 24 year old version of him you know so that's that's where i'm coming from with that hey, i'll tell you what can i can i just say it's fucking brilliant when you when you offered him out <laughs> well yeah i you know i um yeah, I, I genuinely want to. There's a lot of things that I want to experience. And I saw KSI and Logan fight and just thought that looks amazing. And um, I don't dislike anybody enough to actually want to train for those 10 weeks and give it my all, apart from him. So, uh, you know, the offer still stands. I'm still available. Let's do it for the NHS. <laughs> well, yeah, I think so the NHS back, is... Uh, so going back to what you were saying, um, I don't know the interview that you're referencing. I don't know why he would say that. Um, I don't know why there are owls in um, Noel's video. Um, what I would say, speaking from a place of love uh, for a fellow human, if I can overlook the aspect of, you know, feeling bullied by somebody, I'd say this about Liam. I would say he is well aware of the things that we are well aware of. Not the people that do it, 
and who they actually are or been invited into any meetings. But I would say he's, I would say he's a white hat and not a black hat. I might be wrong. Um, but my, not... my intuition says that man wants good things to happen for the planet too. You know, he might not express it well, but um, from from it only going on intuition, I would say, you know, he's, I would say he's a good guy. I have no doubt he's a lovely man. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd go for a beer with him tomorrow. That I don't think that's the issue. Yeah. It's the same though with this, you know, Lady Gaga and, and, and people that are filmed shoving pizza in their face at a time where you shouldn't really be fucking filmed shoving pizza in your, your, you know, it, it, it's not, that is not a good message, right? And so, and I'm willing to accept that, yes, this might be all puppetry. These people are being used, you know. I don't think that particular celebrity could, because they've been sharing pizza with a, I think it was a 13-year-old I've seen last year. There was some... I don't want to say the name of celebrity because I might get it wrong and I don't want to accuse anyone of anything, but it was a very famous top Hollywood celeb with some up and coming girl who was a, let's just, let's just say a 13 or a 15 year old talent. And they're, they're fucking eating a bit of pizza together. This is what people want to know, Rob, you know, they want to know what, you know, is this, is this the? I think I look look look. I, I think that um, I think that if I am being used, then I don't know about it. You know, it's like I, I can. You know, let's let's talk about the comments about which which sort of make me laugh and at the same time scare me. And at the same time, uh, find them infuriating. All of those different things, infuriating, scary, and make me laugh. You know, that sort of, let's say that these very powerful, clever forces have run this world for centuries, which is kind of what we believe, right? We don't know, but it's kind of what we believe. So three weeks ago, those forces had a meeting and decided to send Robbie Williams. <laughs> you know, how did that meeting go? So in that meeting, when they're all chatting, decided to send Robbie Williams to talk to Chris Thrall. So how did that meeting go? Should we send Beyonce? But well, she's not answering. Should we send uh, Rihanna? Uh, too unpredictable. What about Gaga? Well, no one's going to believe her at the minute, you know. Williams? Well, Robin Williams is dead. No, no, Robbie Williams. Robbie Williams? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that genuinely the level that people actually think things happen? Because this is the scary thing about all of this. It's becoming a religion. A religion where... where people would rather believe than know. Mate, uh, why didn't they send me Kim Wilde? Come on. Listen, she, she's not going to make it into the Illuminati, is she, Kim? I love her I know, bit. but I might get a snog out of it, you know? Who do you want us to send over next? So, yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing, you know, is... Um, and, like, what I was saying before, that sort of negates everything that I've done and achieved off my own back and with my own hands. Me, personally, mm. it went like this. I auditioned to be and take that. We worked our bollocks off. Like, you would not believe it. Like, you would not believe what we... And we had the energy and the ability to do it because we were really young. We started with a school in the morning, school in the afternoon, uh, performing... Um, youth club, under 18s club, over 18s club, two gay clubs and a straight club. Day after day after day after day after day, building up this reputation. 
we had these cards that we used to throw into the audience with the P.O. box on the back where they could get information about us. But basically what those cards were, were uh, information data. Because once we had your information, this was then worth something. And this is basically what happened. No record company wanted to sign us at all. Boy bands were dead. But we amassed 70,000 of these cards with people's information on it. The record company that signed us, BMG, bought the cards, bought the information, bought the data that we came with. That was what was worth money to them, not us, our image, or our songs. And then we and them exploited that, and we got lucky, had a hit with... Uh, only takes a minute girl and the phenomena grew you know um i left i wrote and recorded a bunch of songs i released four of them and uh with lesser degrees of success and a note went around the record company we're about to drop robbie williams that week angels came out and angels changed absolutely everything for me now when i went on stage and performed these songs people like what i did not everybody lots of people fucking hate what i do i totally get it i'm just saying the people that came to those shows liked what they experienced told people about it brought somebody with them and that audience grew and grew and grew off my sweat off my back with this throat with this mind with these jazz hands. I fucking did that. You know, now, if you think in 96 that I went and had a clandestine meeting with somebody and, um, and they, they made it possible for me to become an international pop star, your intuition and the way, the prism that you view the world is off. Now, I can only give you that information. You can lead a horse to, you can lead a horse to culture, but you can't make them think, you know, you can lead a horse to water, etc. Now, also, if you can't ascertain real soul and real authenticity and real truth when you're being presented with it, then you're fucked, you know? I don't know where that came from. That uh, it's just something that because I've been reading the comment section last last few days, it's just like. Also, you can't see these people. You can't see their lives. You can't see who they are. So the flatness of text, you can't get much of a read on. These people might be dreadfully unhappy. These people might be suffering with some sort of mental illness. These people might be all of those things combined. But when it goes into my computer as a human, um, it has very detrimental effects. Very detrimental effects. And I, I need, this is something that I've come up with myself. I need to sort this out because there's um, undue pain happening caused by the words of strangers. It has a very powerful effect and hold on my life and i don't know why but i know that i need to release that to live a happier life i seem to be addicted to finding people that will tell me what i can't am yeah that all comes back to the paradise in your head thing that we talked about last time what, what I want to get at, Rob, is I don't doubt you. You're my friend. You know. Bless you. Thank you. Yeah. We actually uh, took cocaine together. You, you don't know about this. Really? Yeah. We were at a party, uh, like a house party, and we went upstairs to the, the master bedroom. And you pulled open the third drawer down on this chest of drawers. And it was fucking 
loaded with coke. We're talking like um, what? Say hello to my little friends. Yes, exactly. You 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 said it right. Um, and then I woke up and it was a dream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got excited then. I wanted to. I wanted some euphoric recall. I was like, "Where were we, oh, mate? What was that? Mate, I had the euphoric recall in that. Just having that dream. It was, you know, if me and Robbie were going to get it together, we're going to pull open that drawer." <laughs> wow. But um, I, what I'm trying to say is, uh, Rob, Rob, I don't doubt you in 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 any way. I think the issue is, is that people have so many questions and how do we, you know, bridge that gap, even, even if we have to, the music industry is clearly satanic. It just is. You know, you've got people like Madonna, it's like, who the fuck are you? putting that shit in front of my children. That's, that's the way we need to start thinking, not just the music industry, but Hollywood. We don't need this, this um, hideousness in front of our children all the time, whether it's through the Disney, whether it's, you know, through the movies, whether it's through the Super Bowl halftime show, it's all clearly satanic now here's the thing right i don't know if that's part of the agenda if these clever fuckers that that clearly run the planet or control the wealth just think let's chuck them a bit of satanism and and uh you know we'll we'll, we'll keep their minds occupied for another 40 years trying to work this fucker out right i i, I don't know that right i do know that that uh evil in in the the literary sense exists you know we we we've both been there when you when you when you're chronically addicted to drugs it's that fucking devil has got you it's it 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 really is just that clear um let me ask a question right i say i share this i share the same beliefs name me something on this planet other than us I don't mean me and you. I just mean us as a species, most of us, uh, and nature uh, that isn't demonic. Name me something that isn't. Not just the music industry or the film industry. What about pharmaceuticals? What about the food that we eat? What about the news that we ingest? What about nearly everything where money transacts name all of it all of it rob name me something that doesn't have a demonic aspect attached to it okay i mean that's just a thought off the top of my head i'm sure that you know we could name a billion things but um can i just I name can i just name something yes like I, went, I went to the court yesterday i hardly go out these days it's great I went to the co-op and as I came out the co-op, the guy coming the other way went, you're right, mate. For no reason whatsoever, right? I do that anyway. I'm, I'm that kind of person. I say hello to my neighbors. I go running and I say hi to the people running the other way. It, it, to me, that is community. That is life. It's how it should be, right? It's called being I northern. <laughs> <laughs> yes when i go up northern you know up 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 northern when you go up north and you're sat in a bus stop it's freaking great to just turn to the person or they turn to you and go so how's your day but yeah that is it's a wonderful part of humanity that again mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pointing up there they are trying to destroy right and so that is beautiful coming out of my co-op and having a complete stranger to say you're right and this is part of what's going on at the minute with this um you know this this God, i don't know if i can say the word i think it's fine this far into the video but covid19 you know it's a beautiful thing that's come off the back of it that reconnecting with a human spirit right so that's not satanic 
That's what I'm saying. Us, us as a species, we're yeah. not. No, that's what, I, that's, not. that's what I'm saying. You know, anything where money transacts or change hands, I think has a demonic element to it. Mm. And I think the further that you go up the scale where the most money is being made is the most demonic. I would, I would say that that is probably true. Once again, I believe that. But I don't know that. I believe that. Yeah, when I'm, um, people approach me for life advice or life coaching or, or, or whatever, I say to them, you know, until you realize everything in your life is a lie, you're never going to be free. And like you said, Rob, our education is a fucking lie. Our media is a lie our diet the the meat industry the dairy is a fucking lie you know vegetables too vegetables now yeah spraying the crops with chemicals you know is if i i won't mention the firm that owns a shitload of our, our food that we ingest but it's a pharmaceutical company yeah don't mention monsanto mate bastards yeah, it's not just them. You know, I don't know who owns, listen, this company that I'm speaking about. But, you know, that's, that's why we're ill. That's why we are ill, because of what we're eating. Mm. That's why I'm ill, because of what I'm eating. Or what I've eaten. Yes. Once you realize everything is a, a lie, life just becomes so fucking brilliant. You can just free yourself up to go and live the truth. Stop believing what you see in the media. It's not true. It never has been. The people that own the media, they don't work for you. They don't love you. They probably actually despise you and they despise your children. And they couldn't... The, 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 the enemy of the people and the enemy of themselves. Mm. Let's get back back then Rob because I know we will be taken to task on this if we don't get some not clarity because we're never going to have that it's always going to be subjective right I saw Roder Ro Roger Federer Roderer that sounds rude doesn't it <laughs> well it's both it's both a euphemism <laughs> yes you can't win with with these tennis players mm -hmm. but i saw roger turn up for this gala ball this met gala ball or whatever it is and he's your archetypal um macho heroic athlete nice guy humble man in, and every, who doesn't like humble right he turns around at this met gala ball and he's got the a snake on his back. <laughs> a, a satanic symbol in if 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 you want to interpret that way, it, it could be a lot of things. But then you've got these other sort of celebrities turning up and there's people wearing pizza dresses if I'm if I'm not like correct. I think that was was that a Kardashian or Rihanna? Apologies if I've got the name wrong, but you know, you can't blame people for asking questions. What I can't blame people for asking questions. And I can't pe blame people from being highly charged and super incensed about the subject matter. I totally fucking get it. You know, if this is true, there will be lynchings. If this is true and it comes to light, there should be. You know, what we are talking about, the very nature of this subject, that if it exists, people need to die. <laughs> and I understand um, how incensed people are because of the subject matter. I'm a dad of four. I'm incensed too. Mm. You know, it's, um, and I, you know, it's like I, I can't speak on behalf of all celebrities. You know, this is also, even though 
this subject matter has become part of pop culture and is uh, kicking down the glass ceiling as we speak. It's not pervasive for the whole world. You know, I've got um, my wife here. She, does, she said, what's going on in conspiracy land? And I, I don't want to tell her because it's dark. You know, she doesn't know. Mm. I've got my security guy here, you know, is interested in UFOs, thinks he's seen something. He doesn't know anything outside of that. You know, um, I, I think that I don't mention, you know, it's amazing that I'm actually saying this on a public forum because I don't even talk to my mates about it for fear of sounding like one of them, you know. So as much as we are engulfed in all of this, trying to connect dots and trying to figure it out, it's not as pervasive as you think. It might become pervasive and omnipresent, but it's not. You talk about Roger Federer, right? Incredible athlete, absolute legend, machine, inspirational. PH7, incredibly normal, just normal. Just, you know, when people say you're not being normal, if there was a picture of somebody normal in the dictionary next to the word normal, it'd be Roger Federer. Mm. Do you think Roger Federer is on the same forums that we are? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but Mike, it, it still poses this question. Why does Noel have fucking owls in his video? Clearly symbolic of Moloch, the, the, you know, the, the, the people that the Satanists, the owl that the Satanists worship and it's on the dollar bill. And why, why do you turn up with of all things that you could have on the back of your, your um, tuxedo, a snake? Um, it's, what well, where's our answers rob you know what, what i mean where's it's, our it's, answers it's, why why do we have all this masonic symbolism everywhere is it all a loss leader because seriously if there's five guys in an office and they control the bilderberg group and they control finance and da, 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 what a great way to just throw people off the scent for for the next 50 years than to put this shit out there put a bit of this, a bit of that. And this is what, you know, I think we need, we need to consider because they're not stupid. They seem to control the whole, the whole shebang. And, and maybe these celebrities doing, you know, the bloody hand signs in music yeah. videos, which is so blatantly obvious now. It's almost, you know, you know, you got main stage at Glastonbury now. It's going to be some... Is is what I think when I see that. I think, oh, that's interesting. Nah. And then I go, well, maybe. And that's as far as it goes. That's as far as it goes for me as a person, you know, is going, oh, do you see that? That's that thing that everybody's talking about. And then you go, nah, nah. And then you go, well, maybe. I think it's incredibly important to keep your mind open. Not so much that it falls out, you know. Um, I don't know. Perhaps Roger Federer just liked that jacket. And um, have you ever, here's a question to you. Have you ever worn anything with a snake on it in your whole life? Um, I've got a stick. No. I thought I had a stick with a snake on it that they gave me when I worked in Africa when I taught the, the street kids. I think my mate got the one with this. It was a really cool ebony stick. Right. Ebony wood is, wood carving is really big in sub-Saharan Africa, right? And when, when we left, they gave us, the, the, the school gave us these sticks. I don't even know what they are. I don't know why 
anyone needs a stick unless you're in the army or something. <laughs> but my mate had one and it had a cool snake wrapped around it. And I remember thinking, my dad's got a real phobia against snakes. So maybe my Hungarian mate had that stick. And let, I, me, I, let me ask you, like there was a big sort of fashion thing that was going on that still goes on really, but it's been done to death. The image of the skull, right? The image of the skull turns up on, I think it was Alexandra McQueen. And then the image of the skull was everywhere. Did you see that? Yes. I mean, the skull image is, it's pervasive in our culture now, which, while, which that, go while, while that was happening, did you think to yourself, Oh, I like that bit of clothing or not? As, as I am now, I just think, oh, my God, it's more of this satanic agenda that's just being forced on us in every media outlet that, that you know, this is my children I'm talking about, Rob, you know, this, it, 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 it's. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear that or that now, knowing, knowing what I know. But I'm uh, not stupid. Skulls are cool. It's, you know, you use skull tattoo yeah. or whatever. It, it's, I, I'm not saying it's not cool. I'm, I'm just saying it, it's the fact it's all so pervasive. Um, is it pervasive or are people just seeing things through a prism of suspicion? That's a possibility. I mean, of course it is. You know, it's like, you know, it's like I was told, there's two ways of seeing life. One is everything's beautiful or everything's shit. And if you choose to, like, for example, in 2006, when I was having not literal downloads, I'm talking about YouTube downloads, feeding me all of this information, you know? While all of that is happening, and you're being red-pilled, as we like to call it, you see everything and everyone and every instant as being maybe this is attached to something. And that becomes part of your psychosis. You know, it becomes part of your reality and how you see the world. Which is why I say, you know, it's becoming like a religion that people would rather believe than know. And I, I'm too like that. I'd rather believe. I'd rather believe than no. I don't like it when people present facts. It doesn't gel well with my view of the world. You know, it's, it doesn't fit with my perception of how I would like things to be and how I think things are, which was a great lesson learned during 2006, seven, eight, and nine, that, hey, there needs to be some discernment because, you know, at one point I was convinced there was a nuclear bomb about to be dropped on fucking Los Angeles and we all had to move to Montana, you know, and that was a real thing that was happening in my head, you know, and I'm sort of like talking to myself about how am I going to relay this information to people without them thinking I'm crazy, you know, um at some but this point, is rob this is all part of the deception isn't it it's this mass bombardment of all these theories and and this information that that irregardless of what you actually believe it's taking our eye off the ball and our eye off the ball is the fact that life ain't right there's too much shit put on our children um, there's a minority elite that control the whole goddamn show. O obviously, they have their meetings, you know, their Bilderberg. You got the, the evils in this world, like the Clintons and the Bush family that are just basically crime families that have got into these positions of power to run the, the USA. Um, and it's, yeah, I get it. I completely get a lot of like 
we call it conspiracy theory is subjective it's completely subjective probably a load of it's a fucking load of bullshit you know i i get that but we we need to remember what happened in new york and i don't want to say the numbers because it, 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 i i you got to be so careful what you say on this platform but without any question of doubt somebody put that plan into action the information is all out there on the internet if you want to know what was behind that event it's it's all there now there isn't there isn't even like any sort of un un uncovered corners um off the back of that the whole world took a massive new turn in terms of not just um america's global dominance in the world or military dominance and i i'm not blaming american people here not at all to me right americans are just the loveliest people in the whole world i i've met many in my life now we just like or... immediately you become like brothers and sisters it's, this is not about american people it's about Am I allowed to say dual passport holders with a certain other other country that are playing the whole goddamn show and hiding behind expressions like anti-Semitic, you know, Semitic, right? It's once you see it, it's pretty. I th I just think it's really clear to see. And is this about Jews? No, absolutely not. And I tell you that one, my brother, Anton, I love you, mate, is, is Jewish. And he's the kindest man you are ever going to meet. So this is not, this is not, a, oh, is this about the Jew? No. My wife's Jewish. My kids are Jewish. That's how it works. There you go. There you go. This is not about that. But until we get over that um, argument or pitfall or, or barrier that we're not allowed to talk about anything in the world because we might offend somebody we're never going to get to the truth and they've cleverly sculpted that one you know they've cleverly sculpted it i, I genuinely believe that jewish people and i'm not the only one saying this that you've got jewish clerics so um rabbis saying the same thing that these the, the, the whole story is being, you, the people are being used, you know, as this kind of buffer that you can't criticize what, what really might be going on. I'm really trying to pick my words carefully here, Rob, because it's, it's well, you a didn't. fucking, <laughs> again. You didn't. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, you picked your words beautifully. I understand what you're saying. That is such a controversial topic and, and a, a landmine for somebody like me. You know, it's like I'm, I'm going to go off and promote a Daft album soon and I'm going to do 150 interviews. And um, out of those 150 interviews, I can guarantee you whatever I'm saying here right now, I'll be answering to. Mm. Yeah, you know, get it. So get it. I, I will, you know... But Your also, thought, Rob, can I just thought, remind you, it, that goes two ways. I'm, I'm the same. I, I have to wake up every morning. This is me, you know. But it's like I said last time. It's fucking easier to live as a, as, a, as a lion than it is as a coward. And I won't be that. I've got a boy. Even if we both get executed tomorrow, he needs to know his dad was a fucking hero, you know. That his dad looked him in the eye and went, "Son, I'm, I'm not going to bullshit you. Know, you know, your dad is not a coward, and that's important to me because that's powerful. Yeah, that's that's incredibly powerful and inspirational. I think, Rob, do you think you're caught because you're, you know, do we get caught? It's like this, right?" Just having this conversation, I can lose my whole YouTube channel, right? I've worked my ass off eight months 
nine months now, just telling the truth, up every morning, five, sometimes four o'clock, usually five o'clock. If I've if I have a lay in, it's six o'clock. Right. I'm still on this computer at nine o'clock at night. I take my my time off in the day to play with my son because I couldn't forgive myself if I if I didn't, right? Really work my ass off. But if I lose it all tomorrow, by telling the truth, I can live with that. Like absolutely. I've been through much worse things in my life, you know. I've been through much worse things and at let, the end me, of the let me say let me say this, you know. As an interested bystander to all of this. If I can lay my hat on something and go there, that's it. I'm fuck I'm in. I'm in. I'm fucking I'm that lion, you know, uh, I, I just need that trigger. You know, I, I'm, I can see that this could become what my life could be about, but yeah. I don't have the, all the stuff you were talking about before. Yes. That those bits. Yes. You know, I don't have the assurance of that not not i'm not talking about you i'm just talking in general that blind faith that a equals b equals c therefore this is what's happening with the world i don't i don't have the it didn't happen in front of my eyes you know i didn't feel it i didn't touch it i didn't sense it i have a i can't go to bat and lose everything because I've got a feeling. Do, 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 do personally for me, because when you say when you say your dad was a lion, I'm like, fuck, that's powerful. I feel a bit shamed. And that's when I go, oh yeah, but if I did know and had had assurance in my own faith and in my own knowledge, I'd be shouting from the rooftops. But I don't. I'm just but mate we do we do from the simple fact rob and sorry i'm not i'm not trying to talk fucking down to you obviously but we know the bbc reported building seven falling from the sky 40 fucking minutes before it did they predicted an event that had never ever happened in human history i i.e. a steel reinforced building collapsing. It's just never happened. It wasn't as though it might happen. It's just like never happened. Amen, as, brother. I'm with you. You know, as that reporter is talking live on a satellite feed to London. I saw it. I've seen it. The building is behind them, right? And then they tried oh. to claim they didn't know that that was a script and that was an agenda. I, so I believe, I believe me. I know, you, you know. know. This, this, I'm just trying to get some clarity here because <sighs> ipso pipso though the conjecture of who we think is responsible is guesswork and assumptions we pretty much know right we pretty much know but it is still guesswork and it still is an assumption I'm totally well, we, down. I'm totally down for everything that you're saying. But for, for me to die on that hill, I need those files in front of me. I need that person sitting in front of me going, hey. And even then I'll be like, fucking hell, babe. Fucking <laughs> to my wife. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I'm I'm maybe a bit braver. I I you, you just look at who had infiltrated the Bush cabinet. Look at who infiltrated it. That, those fuckers were responsible. You know, Larry Silverstein, you lying fucking cunt. I, I, the only day of the year he wasn't in the Twin Towers is because he had a dentist appointment. All right. Yeah, some people will, will b believe that, you know. And I, I call him a liar because he won't answer questions on it, Rob. 
he's had people who've lost family in that building come up to him and go and what does he do his minders and his bouncers just get them escorted out of the room it's, it's not on you know it's not on you got nothing to hide you come out and tell your truth it's that it, it's that simple you know we the truth is coming to light and we're in this massive momentum now and i'm not i don't want to be a champion it's i i, I don't even know if I don't even know how I, as, as an individual who's trying to be spiritually enlightened, is positioned in it all. I don't know if you're supposed to, like, not focus on any of this shit, and you then create your own reality of, of, of paradise, right? But the fact is, there's a big movement now. When David Icke said something 10 years ago, You'd have 99 comments shouting that guy down, right? Telling him he's a fucking idiot, he's a mad, he's insane, and, and coming up with all the brainwashed cliches, right? When David Icke says something now, you got 99 people supporting him, and one person going, yeah, well, you know, and then, and then everyone, <laughs> everyone tells that person to, like, you know. Well... Just from experience alone, I wouldn't, you cannot and should not read or trust the narrative that's being foisted on you. This is a given. I'm, 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 I'm preaching to the converted. We already know that. I've met David quite a few times. I really like him. I like his message. I like what he's got to say. If I have to choose between one or the other, I know where I'm at because I know whose soul and whose spirit I identify with more. Uh, does that mean that he's right? I don't know. But if you've got to put a gun to my head and go pick one, I'm not choosing them cunts. <laughs> I know too much about them cunts. You know, excuse my language. But there, you know, that the demonic energy, once again, is pervasive all the way through the media system. Are you telling me that there's an air of God that flows through those corridors? Are you telling me that there's an air of spirit and kindness and love that is pervasive through this whole system? It doesn't fucking exist. It, doesn't, it does not exist. It's not there. You know, mm. once again, ipso pipso, that doesn't mean that one equals 56. E one and one equals 56 either. Something's up. <laughs> yeah. Something's, something's up. Yeah. What is something? What is the something? Well, the something is really... Let me, just, let me just address people. If you've read books and fucking seen YouTube videos, you know as much as me, you know, and I have a feeling... I don't know how you can, people out there in listening land, some of them, can base your forthright righteousness about exactly what is going on, who is in charge, and what it means, because you believe something. It's fucking disappointing, to say the least. Discernment, you know, is... Um, it is is I suppose is what I'm trying to is what I'm trying to preach discernment, you know. Um, but yes, I totally get it. You know, I I know which eggs my basket are in. But then there's like conspiracies on top of conspiracies on top of conspiracies. You know, the legions of people now that claim that David Icke works for the dark forces. You know, this is what happens. This is why it's actually stupid of me. I, I mean, I love your compassion and your empathy and you as a person, which is why I'm here. And I know how ridiculous this is for me to do. It's not wise for me to talk like this. And I don't mean wise because the controllers will have me away. I mean, it's not wise because you become part of the conspiracy. You know, you become another conspiracy of another clog 
And before you know it, it's already fucked. The sea of mirth that we are swimming in because we want all the information. We are so foggy and so bogged down and so full of shit. We don't, we don't, we can't tell our hand in front of our faces. That's the truth. If you have invested and believe wholly in all of this stuff on every channel that you are watching, you've got a problem. You've got a fucking problem. Mm. Or you haven't. Or you just sit there and you type anonymously and that's as much as you do. Maybe you haven't got a problem. Maybe you got something off your chest that day and you went off with your business. But if you see the world through a prism of everything that we're supposed to believe on the other side, not the mainstream media, this other stuff that we're ingesting, we're a bit fucked. You know, which is why I choose to be a conscientious observer. All the stuff that you were talking about before, I'm totally on board. I'm totally on yeah. board. I but everything, got... everything that's coming to light just recently, I got so excited with lots of news that was happening at the start of this. Yay! The indictments, 150,000 of them. They've all been sent out. Everybody's being arrested. Children are being released. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, fucking hell, this is fucking magic. Oh. Oh. I'm not saying that it won't happen. But where is it? Where, where, are, where, are, where is the manifestation of all of those things yeah, that, so it's, it's, that, our, so that our online gurus have promised us for years now, moving into decades, you know, future proves past. General Flynn gets exonerated. That's what I'm putting my coat on, is going, oh, fucking hell. That was said, and now it's true. That's the bit I can see. That's the bit I believe in, where I go, fucking hell. That was mentioned, and now it's happening. Okay, show me something else. But I'll say again, once again, people would rather believe than know. It's um, <laughs> not easy. I, I, I know I, I know I got on my pulpit there, but no, it's not easy. But we need to remember that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And this is going on, Rob. You know, it is going on. This whole Pizzagate thing is clearly. You know, unless I'm some fucking mentally deranged person, which I, I have been in the past. <laughs> I promise you I'm not. I promise you I'm not now. I tell you what is clear. No. Sorry, Chris, that I keep jumping in. No, that's I, tell right. you, I tell you what is clear. The terminology in those emails is highly fucking suspect. Yes. Highly fucking suspect. What, per what perks my interest is that what seems to be coded message. Hmm. Because it's not just that, that mate, that, is it? it? It's quite clear that the, uh, some of the higher echelons of the British government are all into this fucking shit as well, you know? You've got it, would the, appear, it would appear to be that way. You know, it would appear to be that way. And yeah. as far as I'm concerned, it's the fucking children are everything, Rob, you know? I would die tomorrow if I could fix it all for them. I don't really give a shit about life anyway. It's, I, I love life, but we're all just carbon molecules. It, do, it doesn't really matter. But Which is why I return to the fact of why people are incensed, because it's such an emotive subject. Mm. You know, that's exactly why we should and are bothered about this. It's for them. And, yes. um, you know, this thing that we believe is happening is incredibly, it's the worst thing that you could possibly imagine ever on the planet Earth. Why wouldn't that be a motive? <laughs> it just is. Yes. So where do we, where, where do we take this? What is it? I'm, I'm, I'll state my case is love. We got to love. Things get a lot nicer when you just love. 
I don't mean like ignoring all these satanic fucking abusers. What I mean is, is from a personal point of view, when you just adopt that that position of love, it it something changes in in your world. Um. Yeah, it's. It's something that needs more progress in our own beings. And when I talk about our own beings, I mean mine. Where we put, where I put my energy, where, where I concentrate my compulsive nature on. Why can't I train my compulsive nature to feed into love and acquire more love by giving more love? You know, and with my partner, my wife, my dearly beloved, she is the embodiment of love to me and I to her. And she teaches me every day, uh, welling up. Um, I, I have it. I have it in my life, which is why I think I'm way more content than I've ever been. Put it this way, you know, we can vibrate on such a level because of what the world is throwing at us that we can become sick just by the frequencies of tuning into other people's shit and sick by the frequencies of just existing. I know this to be true. When my wife loves me, she gets rid of all of that for me. I've, I've, I've seen it in action. There's something I'll die on the hill for. I've seen it in action. I've felt it. I know it to be true. I know that love heals me. You yes. Know? And, uh, yeah. I'm very, very grateful. Rob, for let's, not forget, let's not forget, irregardless of anything we've spoken about, all you have put out from when you were bloody 16 years old is love, isn't it? Well, anyone, with, um, anyone can see that. It, it, it might have been a calling for love. It might have been it. You know, you you you've touched the heart of literally millions, and you don't have to fucking apologise for that, mate. You know, you 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 you, you don't well, don't. We're, we're, we're British, aren't we? You know, we we don't take compliments um, at all. It's in, it's it's kind of impossible for us to receive that. And we should, I just say, I thank you very much. That means a lot to me. I, you know, I've, I've, um, I've tried to make my life better. I've tried to make people happy. Um, and I've tried to make me happy in the process. And that's basically what I've done. Uh, thank you very much for saying, niceness you know it's it's no, I, I, mate i don't try and be nice i just try and tell the truth rob you know well that's uh, somebody was saying about a comment about you and i talking together about um you know basically tossing each other off you know but here's the thing as humans as you as me we are well aware and we have been told a billion times how little we deserve how shit we are about our character, the way we look, our fucking earlobes, our eyes, <laughs> our shoulders, our speech, the way we laugh. Everything has been belittled and shamed and ri ridiculed and reduced. I think if you see like-minded people and you see the aspects about them that you respond to that you would think are beautiful, you fucking tell those people you've seen it. You know, it's deadly important to tell people, hey, that thing you did, I really like it. I really admire it. Uh, you know, I admire your courage and I admire your strength. There you go, brother. You know, I, I think, especially if these things, only if these things come from the heart, but um, it's important to reach out to people and say, I've noticed you being amazing. <laughs> Who doesn't want to hear that? 
Who doesn't want to hear somebody say a nice thing to them meant from the heart? You know? Uh, anyway, I've got to go play golf online. <laughs> it's a fucking hard <laughs> life, mate. It's uh, a hard life. From the sublime to the ridiculous. <laughs> um, I just want to clarify something I said on the, um, the last thing. I was actually clarifying my my opinion from where i come from and i said at one point i was the biggest pop star on the planet and um arguably let's just say arguably and there has been right. comments you know there's been comments going you know well you weren't we is where i come from i said that to clarify the next thing that i i meant to to be honest with you when i say that it doesn't come from an egoic place because i actually am more bewildered than any of you fuckers out there but the prospect that that actually happened to me, <laughs> it it's bewilders me. The reason I said that was because, you know, they just paid me the biggest contract in the history of music. I just, I own a Guinness book of records for selling the most tickets, you know, and people pointing out about America and me not being famous there. Granted guys, I bet you the biggest pop star on this planet is in China and we don't know who the fuck he is. Over there, they have TV shows that have ratings of two billion. Two fucking billion. And we've never heard of them. The reason I did say that was that I went on to qualify. If that was the case, where was my meeting? Where was the shadowy figures coming up to me and going, oi, we want you in the club? It didn't happen. That's why, I'm, that's why I was saying that as a... Uh, is to qualify and i will say that once again it bewilders the fuck out of me that that happened to well, me but can it, i it, can i just yeah. ask you one question and i it what's the nk ultra thing right i've always loved you i i know you're the biggest fucking pop star on the planet i don't i don't really give a fuck what anyone else says right you just are you you fucking I went legend. for a bit well it's, you know well, but it doesn't matter go on it's in the eye of the beholder and so who gives a fuck right but when you you went on stage and you had the monarch butterfly on your shirt and yeah i get it that we draw false conclusions through what we see in the media but it's like, Rob, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, okay. You know, for, I'll, for, I'll for, should we just explain for people listening, the monarch butterfly is the symbol of the monarch project, which was in the, uh, the, the CIA and MI5 deny that it goes on, but of course it goes on that they know how to mind control people. You yeah. see it, I think you see it massively in these superstar c celebrities. And I think you see, you start to see the breakdown in, in, in maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but Rob, you had a bloody monarch butterfly shirt on. And when you did the interview with true Geordie, you got butterflies all over your table, right? Now, mate, I'm not doubting you. And this isn't me going, Oh, Chris, like as is afraid to, no, I'm fucking not. I'm not afraid of anything. No, go on, mate. Go on. You know, it, but, it's like it's like the Roger and, Federer thing and, again. But here's the thing: the butterflies on the table. I think you got four kids who you love. Why would you not have butterflies on your table? But the, it's the monarch thing that that make people go, ah. I see. I see where you're coming from. You know, um, I've got my oldest daughter's called Theodora Rose Williams. My eldest son's called Charles and Valentine Williams. My um, then my daughter is Colette Josephine Williams and then Bo Benedict Williams. I swear on my four children's soul. I just like the outfit, Chris. <laughs> I liked the fucking outfit. <laughs> Occam's razor, razor states. Yeah. Mate, I, you know, when I saw that, it was at the roundhouse. When I saw that outfit, I just thought, that fucking outfit's ace. <laughs> I didn't see it through the prism of monarch mind control. I yeah. saw it through the prism of, do you know what? I'll look really good in that tonight. 
And I did. I see pictures of that outfit now and I go, I look fucking boss. <laughs> and I was thin. And I was thin. And, uh, you know, I think it was like the last, it was that, like, that last fuckable day. <laughs> I think it was like, this is my last fuckable day, everybody. Enjoy it. But, um, yeah, the, the wearing of that outfit from my soul to yours was just a man seeing an outfit and enjoying it because mm. I liked it. It's not everybody's taste. But, um, yeah, Rob, can we just clear something up here, right? I don't mean any, not, not me, but I'm sure most people watching, we we don't in any way fucking think you're a Satanist or a, right. or a my, it, it's just these questions that, that people have, right? And you've been so gracious to, you know, you know, like, like, yeah, I did have a, a butterfly table. The wife, I said to myself when I lived in a vision of Brown in the hills of Beverly Shire, fuck me, this needs an upgrade. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to wait till I find a wife, then she can do it. So she did it. You know, she got a, she got a budget and off she went. And she did this house in London and she did it impeccably. Her style and her taste is just, I bow down to her. She's a, she's a maven when it comes to that stuff. Does my wife know that I'm talking to you about this tonight? Does my wife know anything about this subject? No, not really. You know, every now and again, when there's a nugget, a gold nugget, I'll just go, here, look at this. So she has the information, you know, and she'll go mm, like that. The rest of the time, she goes off and buys some furniture. She likes fucking butterflies. <laughs> I don't arrive into my living room in that London house and look at the, um, the, the, the table and think monarch mind control. I just think there's a nice table that my wife bought. You know, that's, yeah. that's the, um, Mate, I the don't little... think you could be monic mind control to have the conversation we, t we just had. But that's when you get into the layers and layers and layers of conspiracy, you know, which will un undoubtedly happen. Um, yeah. And butterflies are beautiful things too. You know, I, I like a butterfly, mm. um, but that's about the size of it. You know, when I, I read, I was walking around the Bodhi Tree, which is a, a, a very, very powerful bookshop here in Los Angeles. Incredible. It sort of had what we consider to be the truth of everything. It was a mind-blowing bookshop about the esoteric. And I bent down, and there was David Icke's book, and I picked it up, and I opened it, and read a bit, and went, fuck me. It spoke to me. You know, it spoke to me and I, um, yeah, it spoke to me and led me to many different places. Uh, and if you look at me in my radio, there's a song called radio. And in that I grow a tail out of my ass. And that is me going, anybody else checking this, anybody else seeing this, uh, anybody else get what this reference is, you know, which is, which is why there has to be care and attention drawn to throwing dispersions at people on the internet, jumping into their comment rooms and claiming them to have affiliations with the darkest forces that have ever ruled this planet. How can you just do, how can you cast that dispersion upon somebody without having firm evidence? Yeah. I'd you say know. it's to anybody listening, you know, don't, say something in a comment section you wouldn't say to our faces people you, don't you, you just look like a twat you just you know it, it it's not a free referendum to just or people, forum well, rather to that's it chris people never ever say to my face what people write in comment sections mm -hmm. in my day-to-day -day life at least for the last 15 years. I mean, when I lived in Stoke, they did. They said it to my face. <laughs> uh, and they also gave me a lot of love too. But um, these days, you think anybody comes up to me and says, what, well, anybody set leaves anonymously in a comment room? Fucking shit houses. You absolute fucking cowardly <laughs> bastards. Fucking give your head a wobble. I've, give your life a shake. 
you fucking spineless cunts. And yeah, you know who I'm talking to. Not you other lot, the light-giving lovers. <laughs> I love you. But the other lot, spineless cowards, snakes. Well, here's, here's the thing too, just to delve back into the love aspect of it, because I can get carried away with how excellent and inflaming it feels to be angry and vitriolic towards people. There is a real energy in that, and I felt it. You know, it's visceral. To dip back into the love energy for a second, you know, we all have our blind spots. Chris has his blind spots. Me, Rob, I have my blind spots. And they are blind spots because we can't fucking see them. Those people that are leaving comments too, you have your blind spots too. Be kind. If you spot something about us that we can't see about ourselves, you don't have to shout at us. We just don't know. Let us not know. Just let us not know. It takes nothing out of your day. If you see it and it annoys you, go about your day. Go about your day. You're not going to change us. You know? Mm. I dip into the hate aspect then again. But I'm just saying, you know, give people a chance. Give give people a chance. Definitely. Rob, are you going to stay on the line while I just say goodbye? Um, yeah. Because then I, I want to, um, when we're off camera, I want to ask what what high heels you've bought lately, and if you've okay. got, if you've got any uh, nice dresses. Is that what you guys in the Marines do? Is that a Marines reference? <laughs> You got it, mate. You 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 know your bodyguards. <laughs> so for everybody at home, massive uh, massive love to you all. Thanks for watching another um, edition of the Bought the T-shirt podcast. Massive thank you to Robbie for just coming on and speaking his truth, and that's all we can do in life. So Rob, thank you, mate. Bless you, Chris, and bless everybody out there in listening land. Keep fighting the good fights. Have discernment and try and stay in the love. I'm going to try my best. I do enjoy hating a lot. It's, um, it's powerful. But uh, it's progress and not perfection that I'm seeking. I'm off to seek some more love. Why don't you all join me? <laughs> Hello, friend. I hope this finds you well. My name's Chris Thrall. I'm a former Royal Marines Commando and I fought my way back from chronic trauma and addiction to live, work and travel in 80 countries across all seven continents, achieving all of my dreams and goals along the way. Now I pass my simple system on to other people, but I can only help you if you like and subscribe. So please do so because you get one life and if you live it right, one is enough.